Welcome back, Aries and Aphrodite viewers. This is Heather. I know, weird, right? Very weird. And this fellow right here, he's not Aries. He's not actually the god of war. He's Tyler. Say hi, Tyler. Hi, Tyler. We're going to be shifting gears a little bit from the normal format of our show and giving you an insight into our trip through Europe last summer. Showing you guys a little bit about our personal lives. Sharing with you some stories, some anecdotes, and travel tips on all the places we went. So for any of you guys considering a trip to Europe, even if it's not as grand as a two-month backpacking extravaganza, we still will have a lot of information for individual countries. So this is going to be going on for quite a few episodes, actually. So we just wanted to give our viewers the info so that you guys aren't caught off guard when you don't see our usual male-female perspective episodes coming up. So don't worry. The ridiculousness of Aries and Aphrodite will return, but it's taking a little bit of a break to tell you guys about our trip. You ready, Aries? Ready, Aphrodite. Welcome to our humble abode. At least it was for two months this summer. We went backpacking for two months, covered 19 countries, and have more stories than we know what to do with. So we are going to attempt to tell you the highlights of our trip, what we learned, what we should have learned, <laughs> and hopefully share with you some good stories along the way. And you know, lots of tips and tricks in case maybe you want to give it a shot. Before you even leave the United States, we both highly, highly, highly recommend that you get Europe on a Shoestring by Lonely Planet. It is the Backpacker's Bible. It is. It covers pretty much every European country. It gives you hostels, campgrounds, budget places to eat. I mean, some of the food. We would not have survived without this sucker. And as you can see, it has been through the ringer. But we'll get to that later. Another thing before you embark on your trip, if you're going to be spending at least, I'd say, two to three weeks in Europe, invest in a Eurail Pass. It oh, yeah. will save you tons of money and will just make your life that much easier. And in case you guys don't know, Eurail Passes are customizable. You can customize them depending on how long your stay abroad is going to be, where exactly you're going to go. If you're planning on hitting a lot of countries or a few countries, they have a Eurail Pass that you can have that will work for you. Yes. I can't speak. All right, so to kick things off, when we first got to Istanbul, we stayed in World House Hostel, which is across the river on the Asian side of Istanbul, because as most of you know, Istanbul used to be Constantinople. Mm -hmm. Istanbul, not Constantinople, Constantinople not Istanbul. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So yeah, it is split on the two continents of Asia and Europe. So we stayed on the Asia side by Galata Tower, which is close to Taksim Square. Really nice area, lots of really cool shops along the boardwalk up there. But restaurants. Restaurants. And just for those of you that don't know, the Asian side is a lot less touristy, so you're going to find a lot cheaper accommodation than you would if you stayed on the Europe side, where most of the tourist attractions are located. And if you go there, we highly recommend World House Hostel, because they're very accommodating, really nice staff, the rooms were great. Their maps are hilarious. You get a free map so when you fun. check in, and they have all these little funny anecdotes on it. Also, the most important part of World House Hostel, I think, is their breakfast. Oh, yes. Free breakfast included with your stay, and they have homemade jam. Not just homemade jam, homemade orange marmalade jam. This is oh. the nectar of the gods. Nectar of the Turkish gods, mind you, but still the nectar of the gods. Lily. I figured it would be Mocha. She's pissed because we didn't bring her. This is the face of someone left for two months, so she decides to barge in on a hot set while we're filming. I didn't get to go to Europe. I hate you guys. Rude. So while he's gone, I'm going to take over for a sec. Just to let you ladies know. Little quick side note, if you're heading to Istanbul, Turkey in general, and you're a little worried because you don't know religion-wise how you should dress, have no fear. It is a very metropolitan city. There are a lot of different people there, different walks of life. And the only real time that you know you need to cover up is if you're planning on going to any of the mosques, specifically the most famous one, the Blue Mosque. Be respectful, cover up, 
Cover your shoulders and your arms, your legs, and your head. Make sure if you're wearing pants and you think that, hey, I've got my leggings on, that's covering up, right? It's form-fitting, and it's too form-fitting. They will make you put something around your bottom. Other than that, as long as you're respectful of them, they are the kindest, nicest people. We had so many days where, you know, we were lost, we needed help from somebody, and the Turkish people were more than friendly. Just be respectful. He's back. Shh. Anyways, Turkey was amazing. If you veer from the tourist areas, obviously they're going to be less prone to speaking English, less likely to be accommodating to tourists. However, that being said, if you are in the area of the Grand Bazaar, you are going to be hounded by people trying to sell you stuff, by people asking what language you speak. Oh man, some guy tried to sell her a pair of pants in like six different languages. So basically the point is, if you are by the Grand Bazaar, yes you're going to get hounded. But if you walk maybe a few streets, a few blocks away, you will find some of the nicest mom and pop restaurants. Like the one we went to. Yeah. Family run, the mom's in the kitchen cooking, the husband's the one serving us, and his little son. The little kid. Greeted us, sat us, gave us menus, gave us water, and this kid was like eight years old. But and he dad's was. dad's just kind of, you know, helping him along if he needs it. Yep. But it was adorable, and the food was incredible. Amazing. Mine came out, and it was still boiling. Highlights to make sure you hit Blue Mosque, Hagia Sophia. The Cisterns, Top Coffee Palace, mm -hmm. Grand Bazaar, and the Spice Market. Yes. Also, if you're staying by World House Hostel, don't miss out on seeing Galata Tower. It is really gorgeous, especially lit up at night. So that's about it for Istanbul. We were going to do more this episode, but there's just so much to do in Istanbul, and it's such an incredible city that we just got wrapped up in talking about Istanbul. So before you embark on your adventure, be sure to get your URL passes stamped, because in the next episode, you'll hear the story about Heather versus the Bulgarian train. <laughs>